Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news just in our newsroom tonight. We have learned a police situation in Royal Oak has been resolved and resolved peacefully. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. This was happening for most of the night in the area of North Campbell Road and Whitcomb Avenue. That's near 14 Mile and Stevenson Highway. Pamela Osborne has been at the scene for several hours now. Pam joins us live with the latest. Pam, what do you know? Well, Kimberly and Devin, this entire situation took place over several hours. Now, police are only calling it an incident at this time, but it looked a lot like a police standoff to us. As you mentioned, it did end peacefully. Take a look at this video. You'll see the moments where a man was surrendering to police from a home at the corner of Whitcomb and Campbell. Residents living nearby were told to stay inside of their homes until the situation was over, and the neighbors we spoke to expressed a lot of concern for the man at the center of this incident and his family. Now SWAT teams were called in to assist here. There was a drone that was overhead for much of the duration of this situation as they tried to convince this man to come out of that home. There's still a lot that we don't know at this hour. For instance, what caused police to be called here to that home before the situation unfolded to begin with? And was anybody else inside of that house? These are all questions that we're working to learn the answers to for you tonight. For now, reporting live in Royal Oak, I'm Pamela Osborne, yeah. Local 4. Okay, Pamela, thank you. Tears and screams of joy outside the Wayne County Jail tonight as the long and intriguing case of Darrell Ewing took another turn today. Darrell Ewing, who has been in prison for 14 years, walked out today after a judge dismissed the murder case against him. Our Mara McDonald live at the Wayne County Jail tonight. And Mara, prosecutors are saying that they're going to appeal this decision from the judge. Devin, that's what they're saying. But I'll tell you, talk to Darrell Ewing, talk to his family out here at the jail tonight. That is not on the top of their minds right now, that he walked out of jail or prison after 14 years. To them, that's what matters. Take a look. <laughs> the joy that greeted Darrell Ewing as he walked out of the Wayne County Jail was all-encompassing. <laughs> Ewing has been in prison since 09. That's when he was charged with murdering a man in a drive-by shooting at Harper and Van Dyke. Now, He's always said it wasn't him. In the intervening years, all sorts of problems with his trial have become known. Jury misconduct, witnesses whose accounts don't add up, a confession from someone else for the crime. Well, that's what they're doing. They just want to solve the crime and get it off the books. They're not about getting it right. That's what we have to start ushering in, getting it right. Darrell was a smart kid, graduated high school early with a 3.8. He put his brain to use behind bars. This young man used to turn down visits from his mother. She would call, she, she would contact him and say, listen, I want to come see you on Saturday. And he would say, no, mama, don't come Saturday because she said, why not? He said, because I'm going to the law library. And became a paralegal, ultimately representing himself with backup counsel. <laughs> this is how you get free. You have to have it. No, but case law. Today, a judge dismissed the murder case against him, and while the final legal maneuvering here may not be over just yet, he's got plans. What I have to do now is get with the prosecutor's office and try to usher in a way that we could do reform for wrongful conviction despite the wrongful conviction rate in Detroit. Back here live, Durrell tells me that among those plans, going to law school. We're live at the Wayne County Jail tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Uh, quite a turn of events. All right, Mara. Let's turn now for a check of the weather from snow at the end of last week to now threat of storms. Yeah, live look at our sky cam from downtown where the 4-1 weather team's tracking the risk for a marginal case of severe weather tomorrow. Let's get right over to Kim Adams with a look at the timetable, Kim. And I'll explain what that marginal means in just a moment. But right now, it's a very quiet night here in Metro Detroit. It's mild as well. 51 downtown, 56 in Howell, 51 in Pontiac, and 60 in Adrian. So here's what it means to have a marginal risk. We usually in the summertime live right here in the slight to enhanced risk. Occasionally, we'll also get the marginal. But this is the stronger thunderstorms that we look for. But right now, we're at a level one, which is a marginal risk. And then it goes all the way up to high. So basically, it means we have the chance for thunderstorms. It's the lowest on the threat level. Our main concern are high winds. 
Then we look at how expansive it is. It goes all the way from northern lower Michigan all the way down to northern Kentucky. So here's the timeline for your morning commute tomorrow. There will be rain. It will be heavy rain, but no thunderstorms. Then a good chunk of the day tomorrow is dry with mostly cloudy skies, maybe in a break or two of the sun. If you're seeing sun in the afternoon, that's a good indicator that the atmosphere is going to be a little more unstable as that sunshine will fuel these thunderstorms. So between six and eight, we could have a few storms that pop severe. We'll talk more about that and what it means to your evening commute coming up. Okay, Kim, new information tonight on the search for former Lions cornerback Cameron Sutton. Yeah, the Lions released Sutton last week after police in Hillsborough County, Florida, said he was wanted for an aggravated battery domestic violence charge. Investigators are saying he is wanted for domestic battery by strangulation. Now, as it stands tonight, police have not yet been able to contact Sutton. Coming up a little later on in sports, team president Rod Wood reveals when the team found out about that warrant. A man accused of stabbing a pregnant woman to death in Sterling Heights is expected to face charges this week. Officers responded early Sunday to a domestic situation at the Sterling Park Apartments. Police found a lot of blood, but they did not see the couple who were reportedly fighting. Then someone in Clinton Township called 911 to report a man covered in blood in the parking lot of the Claridge Estates Apartments. The female uh, victim in this case was still in the car uh, and uh, ultimately, someone called on him because he was covered in blood. He's outside. I seen the cops banging on the, the car door to get her out and then pull the body out and do CPR. The victim, seven months pregnant, had been stabbed to death. Charges are expected later this week. That would likely include the murders of that woman and her unborn child. The e-course man charged in the sexual assault of two elderly women in Dearborn faces new charges in Allen Park. Prosecutors say 52-year-old Michael Holcomb assaulted a 13-year-old girl at a home on Meyer Avenue. Police say this happened March 13th, hours before the attack in Dearborn. Last week, Holcomb was charged for allegedly raping a 78-year-old woman and an 85-year-old woman. Formal arraignment in the Allen Park case is scheduled for tomorrow. Homemade fireworks likely to blame for a partial home explosion in Wyandotte. There are no signs of damage on the outside of the house on Cora Street between Antoine Street and Balmy Avenue. But police tell us the damage inside is extensive and the homeowner was badly injured by something that went wrong while he was trying to make those homemade fireworks. One other person was in the house. We're told their injuries are not serious. For the first time in 15 years, Detroit's credit rating is considered investment grade. Moody's Investor Service is deciding to bump up the city's grade based on strong financial management, revenue growth, and a positive outlook for the city. Mayor Duggan said today, 10 years after bankruptcy, Detroit has silenced a lot of doubters. When the emergency manager left in 2014, there are a lot of dire predictions. Detroiters can't be trusted with self-determination, can't run their own finances. What's going to happen now? And what we have done since is 10 credit, what we've done since is 10 credit rating upgrades in less than a decade. It has been uh, nothing but a remarkable uh, run. And I was really pleased to see Moody's in their report cite the 10 years of strong financial management in the city as the reason for this, as well as the fact that the home values in Detroit have doubled uh, in the last five years. And then the mayor passed out small bottles of black ink to city employees to celebrate Detroit no longer being in the red. A new bus route opened up today to shuttle passengers to Metro Airport from downtown Detroit. It's called Detroit Air Express. It's available 365 days a year and will make 16 trips per day. It will run from 3.30 a.m. until 11 p.m. Riders can board the bus at the stop on Washington Boulevard between Michigan Avenue and State Street. It'll take roughly 30 to 50 minutes to get to the airport. Riders can buy tickets in advance for $6 one way. Tickets are available at the door as well for $8.